Hey, peace family. Good evening. Uh, my name is Jay Morrison. I'm your host of what we call Money Church Monday. And tonight will be um, maybe a semi-retirement of Money Church. I want to introduce to you all uh, my purpose, my calling from God from 2015 and a blueprint, a solution blueprint that the Father gave me for our people called The Solution, a book I inked, and I think it's more or less of a book, more of a manuscript or a blueprint or a business plan for what we call a black community or Africans in America. And this book is called The Solution, How Africans in America Achieve Unity, Justice, and Repair. And this was um, a download, a revelation I got around problems that have existed within the African community in America for centuries, um, especially the last century, and what can we do about it, right? So I'm going to read from you all this book uh, for my for those who are watching on YouTube. Uh, you can get this book for free, a free download. Those on Instagram and other platforms as well. Uh, go to mrjmorrison.com. I'll offer you a free digital download, a free ebook of this book, The Solution. It's an easy read, but it, it, it's, it's an old and dedication to, to Malcolm X and a diagnosis he gave us back in the 60s that still applies today in 2022, going on 2023. Um, so I'm going to read a little bit out of this for us, but I want to talk about, in the spirit of solutions, how real estate has been a fundamental way to free ourselves. And I mean from a, a mass level of nationality and community all the way down to the micro level of you, the individual. You that's caught in the corner trap, like I was. You that's caught in the corporate trap. You that's caught in the college trap. You that's caught in the correctional trap or the culture trap of blowing money fast, spinning it like your last. How real estate is our pathway to freedom. It's our vehicle to how we get free free, um, owning more land. Why is that? Because every single business, every single um, function of our way and being in life involves real estate. Every single one. You go to the airport, you're entering someone's real estate. You're taking off on a plane, you're flying over people's air rights of real estate. You want gold in your watch, it got dug up from somebody's mineral rights of real estate. The gas in your car came from mineral rights real estate. The cotton in your clothes came from mineral rights real estate. So every function, every well-being of our life, the spring water we drink, from the tap water we drink, to the well water we drink, it all centers around whoever owns and controls the land. Like, that's it. Transportation, trains, commerce, sh trading. Like, every function of our life is, has to go through this gateway of the earth itself, Mother Nature, Mother Earth, right, itself. So, the more we learn about it, the more we learn how to maneuver through it, the more we learn how to leverage it, how to own it, how to finance it, how to lend on it, how to buy it, how to close on it, negotiate it, evaluate it, the more power we have when it comes to building our own schools, building our own systems, building our own governments, having our own flag, having our own agriculture, our self-defense. You can't even train, like, people talk about us having a self-defense system or a security system, our own policing system. You can't even, a police department is real estate. Prison is real estate. To train your police department or your self-defense or to train your military, you know what you're going to need in order to train a mass group of men and women to defend your community? You're going to need land. You're going to need real estate. There's no getting around it. So um, the more we as a community and more that oppressed people understand the power of it why bill gates is buying millions of acres of farmland why europeans came over to america to take over the land and the resources why europeans went over to three quarters of the world landmass south america the caribbeans asia indonesia australia the land and the resources they didn't go for for the looks it was for the resources of the land. Oh, what trees do they have? What fruit do they have? What gold, what diamonds, what minerals do they have? How does this help our passageways? How can we secure our borders from wars? We need more land and land control. So when we talk about this particular book um, and where I want to go with this Monday night live stream I do and podcast that I do. Um, 
I want to fall more into a specific calling that I got uh, from the Most High to help those least amongst us. God already told us to, God literally observes how we treat the least of people. Like the ones that you drive by and don't offer a ride. The ones that look a little too dirty for you. The ones that aren't sophisticated enough for you. God literally judges our heart. And he, he literally has said in his word to how you treat the least of these is how you treat me. And when you look at who's most oppressed, who's most impoverished, who's most degraded, who's most disrespected, who's most dehumanized. Here, at least in, in this country and mostly abroad, it is people of darker complexion, people of African descent. Well, I say Africans in America. The least of these. And it happens to be my community, my lineage, and I have enough gifts and capacity to do something about it other than just talk about it. Actually solve it with practical action steps and real strategy and real institutions and real, sometimes thankless work. Risky work. Reputational damaging work. Freedom risking work. So I call it freedom fighters. Right. So I want to tap into that. So, again, to read this with me, I want to go over this. Uh, I'm just going to read a couple pages tonight and then we're going to build on it. But then I want to get into it some other nights as well. Keep going through this book. I want to get off you guys a free download at MrJMorrison.com. So this dedication of this book, this book is dedicated to the mission and legacy of one of the greatest forefathers of the African people in America, Malcolm X, also known as El Haj Malik El Shabazz. Born May 19th, 1925, assassinated February 21st of 1965. Malcolm said, we suffer from political oppression, economic exploitation, and social degradation. All of them from the same enemy. The government has failed us. You can't deny that. Anytime you live in a 20th century, 1964, I mean, 19, 20, 2022, we well, said 1964. And you're walking around singing, we shall overcome. The government has failed you. Same goes for living in a 21st century, 2016, when I wrote this book. And having to still cry out, Black Lives Matter. If it's 2016 when I wrote this book, or 1964 when Malcolm X gave that quote, or 2022 today, and we still got to argue, fight, fuss about, or scream out, Black Lives Matter, or we shall overcome, the government has failed us. This solution hand guide is written intentionally for African people in America, but should be observed by all races, nationalities, and ethnicities of what our ancestors Africans went through and the challenges we still face current day. For the world to hold no one accountable for our nearly 300-year Holocaust, our African enslavement, and our non-repair after these blatant human rights violations is the biggest act of irresponsibility by man in modern times. Let's slow that down real quick. For the entire world to put blinders on after our 300-year Holocaust, and for everyone to act like this hasn't happened, and our enslavement, and the non-repair that we received, the non-redress, the non-reconciliation, the non-repair aid, the non-intentionality to help these obviously traumatized and broken, formerly enslaved, Holocaust oppressed people, for everyone for the world as a whole to put their blinders on and not address that is the biggest irresponsibility in all of modern time. The only way the problem can be solved, first the white man and the black man have to be able to sit down at the same table. The white man has to feel free to speak his mind without hurting the feelings of the Negro. I'm going to repeat it again. The white man has to, have, has to feel free to speak his mind without hurting the Negro. And the so-called Negro has to feel free to speak his mind without hurting the feelings of the white man. Then they can bring the issues that are under the rug on top of the table and take an intelligent approach to get the problem solved. That's not Jay Morrison. 
That's El Haj uh, Malik Shabazz, Malcolm X. I, for one, would join with anyone, no matter what color you are, as long as you want to change this miserable condition that exists on earth. Malcolm X, Oxford Union, England, December 3rd, 1964, three months before his assassination. Malcolm X evolved um, from what we all, most of us know of Malcolm X, to a critical thinker that was pro-problem solving, regardless of who it took to solve the problem. And what I believe, and what I've studied from our forefather, is I believe in dual accountability. I don't believe in just the blame game, although there is blame to be had. I believe in self-accountability, and I believe in government and corporate accountability, and accountability of those who have benefited from our oppression. This is how we begin to solve this miserable condition that we all see and hear about, that we post about in media cycles, we tweet about, and we're all trying to figure out, scratch our head, how do we solve this? We have to come to the table with an intellectual, sober-minded approach and bring the problems from under the rug onto the table and have enough emotional intelligence not to hurt each other's feelings in speaking our mind about the issues that really plague our communities. So what to expect from the solution hand guide? This hand guide is divided into three sections. Mindset shift or mind shift, fact disclosure, and solution action steps. The purpose of this hand guide is to take our struggle uh, past merely documenting our oppression, trauma, and victimization suffered here in America, but providing real life practical actions we as a people can take today to give ourselves unity, justice, and repair. I don't profess that this is the end all be all uh, answer for Africans in America. However, this will provide us a strong foundation and framework to build off of as we move forward in the better days. Words you should know and understand before reading. There won't be any fancy words used throughout this solution hand guide, but there are a few words that I want us all to fully understand by definition. Feel free to reference this section as you read to fully grasp the scope of the puzzle I'm going to piece together for us. First word, redress. I use that word sometimes. Redress is relief from wrong or injury. The setting right of what is wrong. Compensation or satisfaction for a wrong or injury. So when we talk about the word reparation often used, another word is redress. When you know you've injured or have wronged someone or wronged a community or wronged a mass lineage of people, the human thing to do, the Christian thing to do, the right thing to do, the moral thing to do is to offer some kind of redress for that wrong or injury. Here's an example. Has there been any redress by America towards the Africans in America? Uh, another word, enemy. Right? Enemy sounds like a strong word when you're talking about the government or you're talking about other nationalities or races. An enemy is persons, nations, etc. that are hostile to one another. Something harmful or uh, prejudicial causing prejudice or disadvantage. That's an enemy. Somebody that's hostile towards another person or harmful or prejudicial. Example, the American government has acted as an enemy of Africans in America. I put a little asterisk here. This sounds harsh, but by definition, they have certainly been hostile towards our people for no apparent reason. We in turn have not been hostile back. So this is enemy things a one way street here. Second class citizenship. A person is not accorded, a person who is not accorded a fair share of respect, recognition or consideration. Second-class citizenship or second-class citizen, a person who has not accounted a fair share of respect, recognition, or consideration, a person whose rights and opportunities are treated as less important than those in the same society. Example, in 2016, Africans in America are still second-class citizens. How can we prove that we're second-class citizens? 
because we're not accounted the same fair share of respect, recognition, or consideration. That's why there has to be a Black Lives Matter movement. And there's a thing called white guilt and, and, and this, this uh, diversity initiatives. You wouldn't need a diversity initiative if the inclusion was fair in the first place. Colonialism, the control or governing influence of a nation over a dependent country, territory, or people. Example, America practiced colonialism in regards to its relationship with Africans in America. A governing influence of a nation over a people. Hate, to feel intense dislike or Extreme aversion, strong feeling as dislike, opposition, repugnance, antipathy, or hostility. Example, I hate knowing my people are still second-class citizens as a whole here in 21st century America. Antipathy, or antipathy, yeah, antipathy. An instructive, uh, contrary, or op opposition in feeling. A natural, basic, or habitual repugnance and aversion. Example, there's a level of antipathy, uh, antipathy, I hate that word. <laughs> I said it in one of my, my debates, though. There's a level of antipathy towards Africans in America ingrained in the government system that plays out through its policies and policing. Oppression. The exercise of authority or power in a burdensome, cruel, or unjust manner. This is oppression. When you say the word oppression, it's an exercise of authority or power in a burdensome, cruel, or unjust manner. The feeling of being heavily burdened mentally or physically by troubles, adverse conditions, or anxiety, etc. Example, living with the constant anxiety that your teenage son or daughter may get racially profiled, harassed, or incorrectly arrested while driving home from school is a form of impression. When you are African in America and the police get behind you in a car or get behind your child in a car, that level of anxiety that you feel, that many other communities don't feel, that within itself, that mental anxiety and anguish is a form of oppression. Nationality. The status of belonging to a particular nation, whether it's by birth or naturalization. Example, being black or African American is not a legal nationality. This is why Africans in America have not been able to have a seat at the United Nations World Court. Denationalization, to deprive a national status, attachments or characteristics, to deprive of national character or nationality. Example, America violated human rights conduct when it denationalized its African captives. This gets into the spirit of what we're going to be talking about is how do we get free and true freedom? Prior to the capture of Africans who are now here in America or the indigenous Africans who had migrated themselves into America, prior to that capture, oppression, enslavement and second class citizenship we talked about, prior to that, there was a nationality that we had of our own that was stripped from us through the denationalization. Genocide. The deliberate and systemic extermination of a nation, racial, political, or cultural group. The policy of deliberately killing a nationality or ethnic group. Example, the American government has perpetuated and participated in both the blatant and covert genocide of Africans in America. A lot of times we're killed blatantly and overtly, very obviously. And many times we're murdered and massively murdered covertly in ways that we don't even know through our food, through abortion, through mental health, through stresses, through policing, etc. Nationalism, spirit or aspirations common to the whole of a nation, the desire for national advancement or political independence. Marcus Garvey and Malcolm X both practiced and taught the philosophy of black nationalism, which is a spirit or aspiration of black people to have a desire of national advancement or political independence. Homogenous, composed of parts or elements that are all the same kind, not homo, uh, uh, heterogeneous, 
not of the same kind or type. Uh, well, excuse me, homogeneous, composed of parts of, or elements that are all the same kind. Example, although Africans in America may have different countries of origin or tribal roots in Africa, it's quite obvious they are homogeneous in nature. Nation state. A sovereign state established by a, relatil a, rel a relatively homogeneous people or group of people who share a feeling of common nationality. I want to read that again. A nation state is a sovereign state inhabited by a relatively homogeneous group of people who share a feeling of common nationality. Example, if Africans in America were to one day unify, they would have a great chance to negotiate on a global level the opportunity to secure their own nation state, similar to Native Americans who are a domestic dependent nation in America. Dual citizenship, also called dual nationality, status of a person who is a legal citizen of two or more countries. Example, if Africans in America were to unite and collectively become dual citizens of any supportive African nation, then a nation or country could represent Africans in America at the United Nations World Court. This is the only way Africans in America can hold the United States of America accountable for what the United Nations has called racial terrorism committed by the United States of America towards its African American citizens. All definitions are retrieved from dictionary.com. So that is part of our introduction. Next is a preface. I won't read that tonight. I want to encourage you guys, you can read it on your own. I'm going to start reading some of this weekly with us. And part of this book, what I want to give you is um, and where financial literacy and where real estate come into play, is I've only been able to become this free thinking because how business, how real estate, how financial literacy have allowed me to free myself from the corporate plantation, Dr. Boyce Watkins calls it, or what I call the corporate trap, or the corner trap, or the correctional trap. Because I was able to amass enough wealth of knowledge, I've been able to then explore and strongly consider and think for myself freely about what's the condition of my people. Because what's the point of us amassing wealth as individual families when our children are still living in a society and within a government structure and system that still oppresses us, that still treats us and our children as second-class citizens, that still uh, terrorizes us, what the United Nations calls racial terrorism, and when you're truly not free, when you know you're homogeneous to a certain place and a certain group of people, but yet you are co colonialized, as we just read definitions of, and ruled by another group of people. So that, that's like to have wealth, to have cars, to have jewelry, to have things, and we all like nice things. But to do that and pretend it's a big boy flex, when you're still ruled by somebody else, it's a little boy flex. It's not true freedom. It's not true power. And I believe in true freedom and I believe in true power. I believe in real nationality. I believe in real, real, all that, all that I just read. I believe in solutions for our people. I believe in, uh, and there's a quote that I actually tweeted. Um, I can't read it. My phone's right there. But it was to the effect of if, if you aren't dreaming and envisioning and going to execute things that are scary and that are big, you haven't started, you haven't done anything yet. Like I believe in pushing the envelope. And that's where in this financial literacy revolution, this financial literacy movement, I wrote this book in 2016. I wrote this book in two days because it was already in me. I just had to get it out of me into a, a hand guide. But I think what we've lost in the financial literacy movement, we, 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 we've, we're educating the masses on how to get financially independent, but people still don't know where to go. Other than the Louis store, the Gucci store, Saks Fifth Ave, or to spend money with the same corporations that fuel our oppression. 
if you free people financially and help them gain independence, but they aren't leveled up socially, politically, spiritually, you still have people that are, are, are better off, more well-to-do, more comfortable. We now got heat in the crib. We now got cars that start on the first push button, right? And many of us grew up in, in, in impoverished environments, and I was like that. I was like that where I built wealth in my 20s, but still was poor. I had money, but still was, I was poor spiritually. I was poor politically. I was poor socially. And so we have an opportunity in this information age and this message isn't for everybody, but it's for who it's for. And, and part of what I've, I've been trying to figure out within my calling is um, and allowing God to lead me. I want my, my steps to be ordered by God. And part of what I figured out is um, my words, my messaging, my narrative is to attract my tribe. And what my tribe is, is people who care about freedom. People who care about an example of, of, of accountability, of redress, but self-accountability as well as holding others accountable, who care enough about our next generation that we understand is more than just buying them Jordans and gold chains. Like it feels good to buy your children nice things that you couldn't have when you were young, but it literally means nothing in a bigger picture when we have a COVID shutdown, there's a food shortage. It means nothing in a bigger picture when there could be a mass murder in one of our grocery stores and we have no self-defense to defend ourselves. It means nothing in a bigger picture when every group of people in America have a home state, a nation state, and a flag and some other nation to defend them, to hold other nations accountable to their human rights violations at world court, except those Africans in America. We are the most vulnerable nation, nationality, homogeneous group of people here in America. And that's happening on my watch as a 42-year-old man. And I refuse to sit by and just party and BS and buy more cars and buy more bottles and to just dumb down into consumerism and my own family uh, self-accommodations when on our watch after what Malcolm and Martin and, and so many Dick Gregory and so many others on these walls of the black house here, Marcus Garvey and Nina Simone and Billie Holiday and so many others have paid the ultimate price for us to drop the ball on our watch to get comfortable. That's literally a, a plan of the enemy and I defined enemy, enemy in this book is to make it so you're, that we're so comfortable and we're so into our brands and our businesses that we don't want to risk our brands and our businesses and our comfortability to fight for freedom for our peers and for our next generations. I want my daughters to grow up free, free. I want them to be able to look at themselves and know they have the right to be a dual citizen or be part of a nation state or to not be a second class citizen. I want to solve the big, I don't want to be screaming out Black Lives Matter in 2032. And we don't even have a, a, a black government to govern itself. So one thing I've learned is that we can use the oldest industry in a book, the oldest business model ever, the most popular business model amongst billionaires and millionaires, what they all have in common. 90% of millionaires and 100% of billionaires all have in common. And that's building wealth through real estate. That's why it's the play. The stock market's only 100 years old. Maybe a little more than that. Crypto's like 10 years old, 15 years old. And these other, I'm talking about the oldest industry on the planet Earth one you don't need licenses for, you don't need degrees for, doesn't matter if your background, you don't need a, a, some certificate for. We all literally can benefit, free ourselves, while it's one thing to make money off a, off a hustle, off a play, off a business. Like you can make money off so many different things. 
But imagine making money off something that everybody needs to live. Imagine making money off something that if COVID-33 happened and there was a food shortage, you could go on your land and feed your family. Imagine the only business model that you could literally own, make money, gain appreciation, write off taxes, and feed yourself from it. Oh, and build shelter from it. Oh, the trees on your land, you could build your house. The mud and clay on your land, you could build your bricks, the straw. Have your own livestock on your land. Have your own well water on your land. Real estate is such an amazing industry that not only can it feed us through buying low, selling high, rental income, wholesaling, selling contracts, private lending, being a lean lord, landlord, all that. But it literally can feed us, feed us. One of the only business that can feed you why it feeds you. And part of our solution conquest and our quest and our and what we need in order to be less oppressed and more economically, politically, and socially free is business models and business units and ownership in the earth itself and its resources. That's the play. If we have inventions, you're going to need a factory, which is real estate, and real estate to build the structure on in order to produce, mass produce your invention. If you want to get into crypto, blockchain mining, you're going to need real estate for your servers. In this industry, you can go from simple, just buying a home or a duplex, or wholesaling, or being a realtor, or being a loan officer, getting paid for loaning the money. You can go through so many different parts of the real estate roadmap to get paid and free yourself so now you can do something bigger within your purpose and bigger for your family. And I literally stumbled on, or was directed, I would say, into my political awareness while at a real estate conference in Las Vegas. And I'll read that in future chapters. Like real estate literally walked me into all of who I am today. My first time hearing about it was in a corner in Baltimore in 1997. Or 1998, excuse me. It's the first time I heard you could buy all the cars and jewelry you want, but God ain't making no more land. From my big homie, Kevin Bird in Baltimore. Um, and here we are 20 years later plus. So I just want to give you all that, uh, level of setting one where I'm going, what the back call is, the back call is if we going to do this, we got to solve our own problems and we have to give ourselves sustainable business models sustainable skill sets that allow us to free ourselves from the corner trap, the corporate trap, the college trap, and the culture trap, and the correctional trap, for that matter, and every other trap. And I believe that real estate is certainly, it's not the only vehicle, but it is, it is, it is the strongest. That's one, especially coming in this recession when it's about to be a booming rental market. So we have that opportunity. And then... For myself and those who it resonates with, um, I'm not with all the talking. Again, this is our watch. We are those leaders. We the ones. Malcolm and Martin and then we're in their 30s. Like mid to late 30s. Like most of our leaders are in their 30s and 40s. In their primes. That's us right now. And the rising 20-year-olds coming up. The young generation. Like we the ones. We are the change that we seek. It's on us. So we got to level up. We got to kind of priority shift. And one thing that I'm, I'm appreciative of over the last couple of years is that I've been able to grow this last gap in my life spiritually that's allowed me to fill in all the blanks. And part of that is because, again, you could be a rich person but a nasty person. Just because you got money don't make you nice. 
because someone has money or successful or a blue check or has influence doesn't mean, doesn't mean they have, have a good heart. Yo, our prerequisite for how we build together and my personal prerequisite for who I build with is do you love God, do you love yourself, and do you love your neighbor like yourself? Bro, simple. If that don't excite you, if that don't like resonate with you, like we just not the same tribe yet. You're always welcome to come to the tribe and get in the tribe because I wasn't there always. And that's why I love my neighbor like myself. I give my neighbor the same level of grace that I want somebody to give me when I wasn't there yet. But yo, we can't keep spending our energy on rich, poor people. Or poor, rich people. However you look at it. It's time that we literally raise the frequency, raise the vibration, and solve bigger things that are happening in our community and in our world. Like, it shouldn't be another hundred years and we got the same things going on. But it will be if we don't do nothing about it. Things just don't happen. There's no fairy dust being sprinkled that's going to just repair us. It's work. It's work. It's growth. It's self-evaluation. It's self-accountability. It's tough love. It's intentional repair. It's intentionality. Doing it on purpose. And so that's the vibe that I'm on. So I'm going to, um, usually on Mondays, we do Money Church Monday. Um, I'm th- pretty strong. I was going to say I think, but I'm, I'm like almost already certain that um, we may pause from that for a little bit. And I want to spend these Mondays building with you all on the solution. Because we can talk about who God wants us to be and why God sent us here and our purposes. I know mine. I know my exact calling. But it's about the work. Like all the all the church be churching, the worship, the praise, the reverence, all needed. But if you look at the example that many of us follow from whatever religion or denomination you may choose. I'm not a religious person. I'll tell you that. I'll say that off the top. But the relationship with God, relationship with the Father, when you look at the examples of the mighty men and mighty women of God, they all put in work. They weren't sitting around just praying and preaching. They literally were putting in work for revolutionary change. They were disrupting systems. They were disrupting status quo. They were doing revolutionary, scary, hairy work. Like Jesus came and disrupt whole governments, whole systems, whole religious systems. You're not really doing the work of God if you're not doing the work of God. Like, that's what it all boils down to. And so I've been on my quest just constantly growing and trying to ensure that I'm honoring God, being as obedient as possible, and that I'm, and I'm just putting in more work and I'm growing along the process. I'm not here to be who you want me to be. I'm here to be who he wants me to be. That's my only measurement of success. Is was I obedient? Did I sacrifice? And was I, did I move on a word? And so I want you guys to tap in with me more on that part. I'm here to offer what I've amassed and learned over the last 20 years in real estate as the vehicle that I know best to help free families. And I've helped contribute to freeing hundreds of thousands of, if not millions of people throughout the world, literally, like in the last 20 years, this is a fact. Like so many people that you know, that I know, that we come across who have bought their first duplex, first home, 10th home, whole portfolios, apartment complexes, started funds. I know multiple fund managers say, hey, look, I never even knew about a real estate fund until I saw yours. Thank you for paving the way. Thank you for taking the darts. Just putting in work. So if you want more on, on this craft, this vehicle, and this skill set that, that we have to help, um, to help elevate us, just shoot me a message. Click the link in the video. Tap in for any of the trainings, the workshops, the curriculum, the real estate roadmap program, the funding that we offer, deal, deal finding courses, deal evaluation, other people's money, OPM courses, all those things and trainings that we have, mentorship, the private communities and inner circles, tap on into the real estate roadmap program, 
That's roadmapprogram.com if you want to learn more of the systems that we put in place to, to, to build through real estate. Um, otherwise, we'll keep pouring in, keep doing the work, and keep living purpose-driven lives, lives that have impact that matter. Like, that's the whole thing. It's like, when I go, they're going to say, like, bro, put in the work. And my father, most importantly, is going to say, forget what I mean. It's cool what y'all say, but my father going to say, son, I'm well pleased. It's the biggest part of it all. All right, so listen, family, um, tap on in next Monday, 7 p.m. Uh, we'll be back at it uh, with some more to solution. I want you guys to go ahead and read up yourself. Download this at mrjmorrison.com. You can download a free copy. If you want to support and purchase one, it's at amazon.com. You can purchase up. We'll ship it out to you. Um, but thank you all for tapping in, just hearing more of, of my purpose, my journey. Allow, thank you for allowing me and it's giving me your ear for a little bit but allowing me to, to walk into and get comfortable um, in my purpose. Uh, that's really important. A lot of times we're confused in society. It'll tell you to be everything else. It'll tell you who to be, how to be. Um, but, you know, this is a growth process for me. I love giving that growth process back because I know someone else can build their confidence up off watching me go through the, the stumbling and fumbling sometimes. And a lot of times I get it right. You know what I mean? I may smooth sometimes, but sometimes I stumble and fumble too. But it's all part of the process, man. I really appreciate the process. Um, so we'll be tapped on in, man. On YouTube, subscribe, like, share. You guys are going to see more episodes of The Solution covering all topics, political, social, and economic. These are the areas we have the most deficiencies. And these are areas where I have capacity and I have comprehension in. And so... Uh, I'm not going to be pigeonholed to one box. Um, I am the box. You know what I mean? The whole box. I'm walking all my gifts in real life. All right, y'all. Peace. Tap in.